fat owner. <laughs> Good morning, Mount Calvary Baptist Church family and friends. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are so happy that you have decided to join us once again on Facebook Live and phone conference. I am Deaconess in training April Dubois, your worship leader. Mount Calvary Baptist Church is located at 2221 Emmett Drive, Alexandria, Virginia, 22307. Our pastor is the Reverend Frank R. Kelly Sr. We encourage you to continue your financial stewardship. You may do so by way of e-giving. You can go to our website, www.mountcalvarybaptist.com and click the e-giving button or by using Cash App. Our cash tag is dollar sign MCBC 2221. Please add a note informing us what your payment is for. In person, a member from our finance committee and trustee ministry are available every Saturday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. to collect tithes and offering in the education building. Or you can email your tithes and offering via check to the church. The church where our address is 2221 Emma Drive, Alexandria. 22307. We now have a 24 hour prayer line. If you or someone you know is in need of prayer, please call 844 622 2733. We're going to do a little housekeeping now. We want to remind you of the safety measures and practices as it pertains to COVID 19. Wash your hands often. I repeat, wash your hands often. Practice social distancing, wear a mask when out in public, cover coughs and sneezes, clean and disinfect touch surfaces. Please stay home if you don't have an essential need to be out. We will now have a musical selection from our music ministry.
we will partake in the Holy Communion following the Bible message. We ask that you have your communion elements available. You are welcome to use bread or crackers and juice or water. We will now have a To God be the glory. Now we will introduce the preacher of the hour. It is now preaching time. I now present to you our Bible messenger, Reverend Dr. Elton Wilson. Eternal life in your presence. 
We thank you, Lord God, for all those assembled here and for the angels encamped around our suffering households. And now we ask that the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, will indeed be accepted in your sight. O oh Lord, my God and my Redeemer, I offer this prayer in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Masquerade. Masquerade. Earlier this week, I had the, I had the, 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 the privilege of visiting a relative that I had not seen in some while. Uh, of course, uh, I went to his uh, place of business and uh, had my mask on, and he didn't recognize me. Uh, even, you know, as I sat and talked with him for, for a few minutes, and I found I had to introduce myself. And then uh, we left his office and he introduced me to uh, another woman who was in the establishment and uh, <laughs> I didn't recognize her and it turns out that it was his mother and so our surprise was when we recognized each other was it was a surprise amen yeah. um, but it had been that, that long but I just want to start by letting you know that uh, as Christians, as children of God, you and I are not nameless faces when it comes to God. Because the God we serve knows us and he is concerned about us in so many ways. We're more than just names to him. More than just faces to him. More than just social security numbers to him. Uh, we are indeed child, children of the King. Amen. Amen. And so our, our text this morning focuses on Jesus at the outskirts of Jerusalem as he prepares to enter that city. Jesus' ministry had carried him to many of the towns surrounding Jerusalem, as you know. And in each of these instances, Jesus was as humble uh, 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 a servant who sidestepped, if you will, public acclaim. He often told those that he healed to tell nobody. He, 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 when the crowd started to swell, he would move on. But now Jesus was deliberately coming into Jerusalem in a fashion that would strengthen the public's conclusion that Jesus was indeed the Messiah of Israel. The book of Zechariah says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See your king comes to you. Righteousness and having salvation and gentle and riding on a donkey, on a coat, a foal of a donkey. So by coming into Jerusalem, Jesus was in effect proclaiming that he was the one that they had been waiting for. Uh, the one who was righteous and who was to bring salvation. The people cheered for Jesus using the words of Psalm 118. I believe it says that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. And that this psalm was commonly used to greet pilgrims coming to Jerusalem for the Passover. But this greeting seemed different. The people believed that the one that they had looked forward to for all these years was now riding into Jerusalem. As Jesus rode in, the pilgrims who had come to Jerusalem were packed or for the Passover took off their coats, put them on the ground, and, and, and the donkey walked upon them. They took palm branches and waved them and also threw them on the ground in front of him. 
It was the equivalent to rolling out the red carpet. Amen? And as Jesus passed through the crowd, there were many faces that flashed by him in a blur. There were poor women. There were religious leaders. There were angry zealots. And there were some children. They all pushed. They all shoved. And they shouted his name. Except for the fact that he was the son of God and knew the concerns of each and every one of them. They would have all simply been faces in the crowd. And so my question this morning for the time that I have is what masks are you wearing? While the common use of masks is to hide something, this is not always true. Sometimes we, we wear masks, and we know this more than, than at any point in our history, we wear masks to survive. It's not always wise to say everything that we think, to respond to every attack or reveal every secret thought. Just as Jesus never let on uh, to the Pharisees that he was troubled about the prospect of Calvary or even told men who he was for nearly 30 years, it is often necessary to mask some things. You can't always tell everybody everything that's on your mind. Amen. Am I right about it? Amen. See? Amen. Just as, just as an oxygen mask provides a, a patient with pure oxygen to help them breathe, uh, there, there, there are masks, if you will, that uh, uh, times that every believer needs some solitude and some quiet time just to breathe spiritually without telephones, without cable vision and computer screens and screaming sirens like the movie star that puts on a disguise for the privilege of just walking down the street. Sometimes we have to wear masks. Even more so, mask protects us. Now, isn't that what the, the masks we wear now are all about during this COVID pandemic? Amen? It's in times of danger and difficulty that such a mask can indeed be a lifesaver. And the fact that God will be a protective and life-giving mask for us in a time of trouble is probably what David had in mind. In Psalm 27, he wrote, For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. God serves as a mask for us to, to hide us, to protect us, and to give us room to spiritually breathe and to find him. Some masks, as I've said, hide our true feelings. When Moses went before the Lord, he came back with a brilliance about him that was so awesome that it both amazed and frightened those who saw it. The power that illuminated him was so great that he had to wear a mask to veil the power that was behind it. In Exodus 34, 33, and 34, we, we are provided another insight. Because when Moses went in before the Lord, he took off the mask he wore in public and presented his real self to God. There are many today that have a public game face. They, they, they show the world that that, 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 that hides the fact that they have been in the presence of the Lord. And so it is with even our young people. Uh, they, they are a generation who have had a mountaintop experience. Amen. They have literally been in the presence of God at some point in their lives, yet they felt his presence and understood the power of his being, yet they hide what they feel on the inside because it would not be a popular thing to do. They want to tell the world about it, but instead they wear the mask of silence. They want to witness, but they wear the mask of diminished testimony. 
instead of the face of a believer that is happy in the Lord. And so many of our youth choose to wear that hood friendly mask. I used to call it the bus riding mask. Amen. Because you can't get on a bus in the district and not never mind. Amen. Amen. So that they can gain popularity with the crowd and the respect of their peers. But what about our true feelings for God? We should not hide our love uh, our, our love for God behind a mask. We should be willing to let the world know that he is sweet. I know. God sees through the mask no matter how brilliantly crafted our mask is. God sees what others can't see. He is able to discern the real us. Am I right about that? This is illustrated in the Bible when God was looking for a king among the sons of Jesse. All of Jesse's sons were great figures and stood as likely prospects to be king. But the prophet Samuel asked to see the last son who was considered unlikely to even achieve a man very much in life. He wore the mask of being a shepherd boy. Amen. He could do nothing but write poems and play a girl's musical instrument. Despite their mockery, God allowed Samuel to look beyond the outer mask and see what was on the inside. And after he chose David to be the king, Samuel's words rang true in every ear. In 1 Samuel, we hear him say, For the Lord seeth, amen, not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. The truth should be encouraged uh, in every young man. It should motivate every young woman. Despite what they may say about you in school and in, 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 in your community, amen, in, in your workplace, amen, God knows the real you. He does not judge you by the same standard as others do. He knows that what you can be and what you will be. He looks beyond your exterior and sees your interior. He sees a bundle of talent waiting to be discovered. Sometimes he sees a wounded spirit waiting to be set free. While the world may not understand us, it is reassuring to know that God knows us and the real us behind the mass us. Amen? And there will come a day. When there will be no masks, when there will be no disguises, when there will be no masquerades. It is not come yet, but the day is coming when each of us will see the beauty of God in all of his force. Oh, yeah. That's what Paul meant in 1 Corinthians 13 and 12 when he said, for now we see through a glass dark, but when then face to face, I know in part, but then shall I know even also as I am known. One of these days, we won't have to laugh when we really feel like crying. One of these days, we won't have to smile to disguise a broken heart. One of these days, we won't have to pretend that, that everything is all right to disguise our miserable feelings. Then face to face, we will see the Lord in all of his goodness, standing ready to reward the true and the faithful. I'm glad to know that God looks beyond what we see to see something better. Am I right about it? I'm glad that when uh, he is willing to accept us, uh, when everyone else uh, is turning away, I'm reminded, beloved of God, of a true story of a young woman named Charlotte Ellis, 
whose body was wrapped with pain and misery. She smiled on the outside, but was miserable on the inside because of her physical condition. Uh, she, 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 one day, uh, she was travel a traveling minister uh, came to her home uh, for a visit when preaching in the area. Uh, and before he left, he asked the young woman, uh, who was obviously miserable and infirm if she knew the Lord. Uh, the woman considered her condition and took offense to the preacher's words. Uh, three weeks later, uh, the preacher happened by again, uh, and she told him that for three weeks, uh, she was worried about uh, what he had asked her. Uh, she wasn't able uh, to do anything, uh, but just sit in her house. Uh, she didn't have any strength uh, to be a great witness. Uh, she wanted to know uh, how to accept Jesus Christ. Uh, the preacher looked at her, uh, looked her in her affliction, uh, and he said, just come, just come, just come uh, as you are. Uh, she accepted Christ that day, uh, and God released a song in her heart uh, that is still sung around the world uh, nearly 2,200 years later. The song says, just as I am, uh, without one plea, uh, but that thy blood uh, was shed for me, uh, and that thou bidest uh, me come to thee, uh, O Lamb of God, uh, I come, I come. She went on to write uh, 150 hymns uh, to a God that looked uh, beyond her frailties uh, and said, come. Somebody here today, uh, somebody listening today, uh, somebody watching today, uh, need to come uh, just as you are. I don't care. And come to me uh, because there's no masquerade. 
gave them a final commandment to love one another. That would be your witness to the world that you love one another. And after he had supped with them, the scripture says that
We are on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find our handles on our website, MountCaverineBaptist.com. You can also visit our website for information pertaining to Christian discipleship. Just a friendly reminder, reminder to support us through financial giving. By way of e-giving, MountCaverineBaptist.com, click the e-giving button. By using Cash App, our cash tag is dollar sign MCBC221. In person, a member from our finance committee and trustee ministry are available every Saturday from 11 to 1 p.m. to collect tithes and offerings in the educational building. Or you can mail your tithes. 22, 21, Emmett Drive, Alexandria, Virginia, 22307. And we now we still have, we now have 24-hour prayer line. If you are someone you know or in need of prayer, call 844 we are growing closer to the 2020 elections. To confirm your voting registration status, please contact your local election office. If you are not registered, a registered voter, please register as soon as possible. Please vote. It is your right. Remember, your vote is your voice. Thank you to our dance ministry for your support this morning. Thank you for worshiping with us virtually. It was my pleasure as your worship leader this morning. We will now be blessed by LCBC Dance Ministry and closing remarks and prayer by Reverend Wilson. Please continue to have a safe and blessed week. Amen.